it seems he has actually started for me so it should be okay so thanks for trying we are a little bit early So good afternoon, everyone. It is two o'clock here in the UK. Uh, normally, we would have uh, one of our marketing colleagues do an introduction to a session such as this one, but my colleague Anne is currently sat in the airport uh, in Amsterdam, and she can't really unmute herself because of, of the noise that uh, is present in the area. Um, but she is here to moderate and she will be able to answer your questions via the chat function on this call. Um, I will be starting in a few minutes, just giving a chance to, to the rest of the attendees to, um, to join. And I, I will be then opening up at the very end for a quick Q&A session so if you have questions. So let, let's wait a couple of minutes to just allow people to, to join. Thank you. We will be starting very shortly. For your information, this session is now being recorded. So good afternoon and welcome to Building a Business Central Practice with QBS. Um, I, I will start now that uh, we are allowed for a couple of minutes for extra attendees to join. Um, a quick introduction, I'm Andy De Rosa, I am Program Manager at QBS Group. I've been involved in the Microsoft Dynamics ecosystem for the last 15 years. I'm here today to show you what it means to become a business central practice and how working with QBS will ensure your continued success. We start with a strategy. Like with any new venture, you need to start with a strategy and a vision. So the vast majority of practices who fail do this because they have not spent enough time planning and doing the necessary research. Also often, the lack of direction and uncertainty about which markets to exploit together with an unclear horizontal versus vertical approach result in a practice running out of steam when they should be really accelerating that go to market. Microsoft wants partners to become niche, bundle up the capabilities of Business Central, for instance, 
together with an IP that they can resell in volume. My advice to you at this stage is to decide exactly what road to take and to stick to it whilst keeping sight of the bigger picture. So the next very crucial step and often overlooked is to have a clear vision of how you are going to achieve your first three customers. Where are these coming from? Could be a question. Do you have a legacy customer base on another ERP that may be in urgent need of a new system? Have they have grown the current system or have no choice to go to, to the cloud? Do you have a vertical market focus that allows you to go to market in a more accelerated way? Second, but equally important step is to define your team. Do you have ERP focus and capabilities? Or you need to build <coughs> someone is actually coughing in the background. Can you please mute? Thank you very much. So I was saying, uh, second important step is to define the team. So do you have AAP focus already in capabilities or do you need to actually build the um, practice from scratch? Can you, for instance, reuse existing resources? Are they interested in, in getting involved in something quite new and exciting? Third but not least, you need to come up with your P&L and cash flow model. How is the new line of business going to look, for instance? Where are the funds coming from? Are you going to divert funds from the existing business into this new venture? Return on investment is a slow process when it comes to repeatable billing. So you need to think about how your business is planning to incentivize your resources in the long run. Let's have a quick look at how exactly Microsoft thinks of Dynamics as a very valuable part of the business ecosystem. Those of you who may have become involved with Microsoft since Satya, you know that he's very well focused around Dynamics and he has been a, a beacon for the Dynamics business. Prior to that, Dynamics was always something a little bit left in the background. So we have the full support of the CEO. And at the same time, we have a very good uh, endorsement uh, as QBS from Cecilia Flombaum regarding the way that QBS Group can support our ever-expanding channel. So it's good to know that we are recognized for the work that we are driving out there in the Dynamics channel. Now, um, let's have a, uh, a quick look before we start um, specifically around the business central practice. We have included a couple of slides just to talk about how, uh, how QBS manages the community. Um, we are told very often that a very big value add from our side is that we, we can connect and spar with partners located in uh, over 22 countries. And this is a big value add to you as a reseller. We, um, we have a community of 600, plus partners, all with Dynamics at the core. Um, and this is obviously a benefit because together we represent the largest partner in EMEA uh, when it comes to dealing with Microsoft um, EOC, giving us an operational advantage that makes our daily operations more streamlined and therefore it helps you out there in the channel. Uh, our partner success managers play a vital role in informing partners about strategic information and um, that comes out of Microsoft. And we provide regular updates to our channel so that they receive the most relevant information and can stay up to date with developments. As you can see there, we have uh, currently over 600 partners in the community and growing. When you join QBS Group, you will find that um, all of these benefits this is a summary of our value proposition to our Dynamics partner ecosystem. When you join us, you can be part of the largest network of Dynamics focused partners and enjoy the enhanced benefits of working with QBS and Microsoft. Now, we are going to look at how the economy has changed and 
let's have a look specifically at how the market has changed and why it's so important to understand where customers come from and how they perceive software solutions rentals versus the old way of owning a system, for instance. We really do live in a subscription economy. Let's just think for a moment about our own private lives and how we subscribe to services as part of our own hobbies or interests. Business systems are becoming just that, a commodity, not a burden anymore. The next slide speaks for itself. 80% of businesses embracing the cloud, 8% expressing no interest. When I was having the same conversation around 2014, 2015, this slide would have looked a lot different, with businesses already embracing the cloud showing at around 20% and the rest still trying to focus on on-premise for the very vast majority of their overall business platforms. Continuing from the previous slide, this is to add some urgency to the conversation about bringing your business to the cloud. Start adding customers that bring in that recurring revenue. The important thing to stress here is that it's not QBS, not even Microsoft dictating that this change in the agenda. It's the customers. Microsoft is simply answering to a demand in the market. Digital transformation is becoming such a cliche, or at least an overused term, but it doesn't make it less true that a reseller needs to take a critical look at what the business is today and where they want to be in five or 10 years time. Our story starts there in the market because that's what our partners are facing every day. This slide and the next three is where we make a link to the factors that have brought the partner to our doorstep the establish, to establish the connection to their reality. So let's have a look. These appear to be the common reasons that indicate a shift from the old mindset towards more compelling ones. Uh, this should be the reasons why companies are implementing ERP. But what if you analyze the vast percentages of new um, factors, user experience or more seamless integrations or even to better serve the customers together with an overall business performance improvement? This really show that you know uh, customers are there to better themselves and better the business and therefore their customers. And user experience is top of the agenda as well. So what happens next? Um, lots of questions spring to mind when you are thinking about a new business, but this really resonates with most business owners and entrepreneurs. They have undoubtedly had the same questions at some point in their careers, even though they may not look exactly like in this picture, but the essence here is that you need to clearly think and think hard before making decisions. So is what we are doing today bringing us closer to where we want to be tomorrow? Do we know what we have to do? Do we know how to do it? And even when we actually answer those questions, of course, there were more that will follow. And typically when starting a practice in the cloud, focus around uh, repeatability and, and fast deployments, these are the questions that people will ask themselves. Is it really a good business? Is it going to impact my existing business? And in which way? Do I need to invest money? And of course, how much money do I need to invest? Will cloud go and cannibalize against my current business? Can I actually survive without the cloud? Do I have to integrate into my current business or form a separate business unit? And we're gonna see that later on. Do I also market the same way or do I need to change my marketing strategy? What do I do with my technical teams? What KPIs should I, should I monitor? How do I incentivize the business? So what changes do I need to make? Endless questions. Now that you've got the questions in your head, you need to start thinking about how do I go to the next step, which is building the team. Let's have a look at what it really means to build a business central practice and to clearly identify who does what within the team. So your ideal business central team will look something like this. Functional consultants, developers, sales, pre-sales and marketing team. Everyone plays a vital part to the success of your newly built business central team. 
it's true that this team can look very different from partner to partner. As a rule of thumb, the bigger the organization, the more defined the, the roles will be within it. Whilst a small organization will very often have no clear boundaries between the entities, resulting in a jack of all trades approach. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but I have come across very capable uh, MDs who are also capable sales, pre sales resources, and functional consultants. Some of them even stretch as far as being good developers. Marketing, on the other hand, is very much always best left to marketeers. They are indeed a different breed from these resources, and I've never, I have personally never witnessed a great marketing plan developed by non-marketing people. And, all, and often this results in being the Achilles heel of the go-to-market strategy. We're going to cover a little bit more about marketing later on, but in the meantime, it may look like I'm stating the obvious in, on this next slide, but if you are indeed new to ERP, this is how each function is laid out in terms of responsibility and accountability within an ERP reseller. Functional consultants understand customer needs. They need to relate with the, with the business flows, uh, the customer sites, and understand what the business requirements must be. Developers work together with consultants to actually deliver that extra value to, to customers. Sales and pre-sales are there to do just what is needed, which is sell and making sure that the sale is smooth and that what they're selling is what the customer actually needs. And of course, the marketing team is there to uh, ensure that the reach is there and that, they, that the sales will increase. So, one of the biggest influences on your go-to-market strategy is to clearly identify yourself as one or the other. You are either project focused and a slow burner or a fast accelerator who thinks volumes rather than quantity. Business Central allows you to be both. The software is there to support your go-to-market. You need to decide what is the model you wish to adopt. This goes back to the previous conversation of setting your goals early. How will you secure your first three customers? Comes back as one of the most crucial questions you could ask yourself. There isn't, of course, a right or wrong answer here. You would know if you have done your market research and if you can rely on the knowledge of your strengths and weaknesses straight from the word go. Let's now focus on how QBS can help you achieve your ambitions. At QBS, we recognize that partners embarking on such a journey require a complete end-to-end -end program, spread out over a few months, covering all aspects of the practice building task. Each phase of the program has been clearly scoped, taking you from zero to hero in a structured and meaningful way. Our approach is not new to the market. We have already run successful programs in some of our other regions, MIA and Netherlands, for instance, we have already enabled many organizations to succeed with both Dynamics now over the years and now Business Central and um, making them successful. Have we run pilots uh, regarding this program in, in successful in these geographies? We are now ready to scale across all of our regions. In the next slide, I'm going to be detailing the uh, five phases that make up the uh, program. So let's go and have a look. We start off with the strategy phase. That's all about building the vision and it's aimed at your key stakeholders. This phase introduces you to the business central uh, to end the wider Microsoft strategy. We then follow with the enable phase where we target your consultants, both functional and technical, and we will put them through uh, both an online bootcamp, which is a self-learning approach through our QBS Academy. And one, one of these resources under the program will also be sent to um, attend the uh, five days classroom-based Business Central bootcamp at a location in your region. And this is a very important course um, with uh, experienced trainers who will walk the trainees through um, an implementation. So it's like a virtual implementation, in fact. Setting up an initial tenant company and uh, throughout the, the week, bring, bring this implementation actually to life, having configured it 
as if it was a real customer. The next phase is the um, demand phase and is aimed at your marketeers to understand how they should plan your go-to-market, what things work, what clearly does not, uh, what your website may look like, uh, what best practices are there around, for instance, stuff like SEO um, and Google AdWords. We will also um, talk about, in, at this stage, uh, around the um, QBS Take the Lead program. This is a lead generation program which will be tailored to your exact requirements. So when, uh, when you want to start looking for customers, we can help you get the right leads that suit you. The next phase is the uh, sell phase, uh, is where your salespeople learn how to pitch uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central and how they can adopt the best approach to actually doing demos to, um, to prospects. The deliver phase being the last is where we assist you with your first sales implementations and support you and guide you through the next steps in your practice growth. This is how you build a a business central practice. In a nutshell, QBS can offer you the following benefits through a variety of means, from on-site strategy meetings to online and classroom-based technical courses. From guidance through our partner success managers and PTS community to marketing and pre-sales assistance to uh, post-sales support, via our partner care resources. We ensure your journey carries on as structured as possible. Getting to the end of the program is only the start in our continued relationship with you. So who is going to benefit from the program? Our program is designed to cater for a variety of partner personas. From the Office 365 and modern workspace partners wanting to add capacity to their business by investing in business applications, to CRM resellers who want to start reselling ERP. This program is also applicable to existing Dynamics Nav resellers who intend to create a parallel line of business from scratch, separated from their traditional Nav project business by hiring new resources specifically focused on different targets, KPIs, and who are molded into understanding the intricacies of a repeatable, scalable business practice. QBS will have obviously a, an active part in driving your business forward, helping you in getting your new business off the ground in the most crucial year one stage to continued partnership and inspiring into subsequent years. As your business evolves, we have the right expertise to ensure your dynamic journey is, is on the app and that we can support you with adapting to the fast-paced Microsoft world. Our partners are the best informed Dynamics partners after all. For instance, we invest heavily in sending resources out to Dynamics events such as Inspire, Extreme and Directions US and EMEA and tasking them with documenting findings, which are then collected in a series of reports we share with our partner channel. So that if you cannot go and invest in participating in person in these events, you can rely on our reporters to attend many parallel sessions and giving you all the, the highlights from, from these um, events. We also host our own events uh, known as QB Share, and these are a very valuable uh, way of both receiving up-to-date news from Microsoft, the channel, our ISVs, but also a very good opportunity for networking within the QBS um, channel. So moving on to the next slide. This is a summary of your benefits when taking part in our Ready to Start Business Central program and with continued participation as a QBS reseller by means of an annual SLA. We have created the program specifically to ensure a fast ramp up for you and your new Business Central team. These benefits support you during the very last phase of the program, the deliver phase, where you can rely on our knowledge and expertise with your first projects. Following on from the program, you will turn to an annual SLA of your choice, depending on the level of engagement you wish to receive uh, from QBS. 
this decision is, it will not be necessarily at the start of your journey with us. First of all, you need to concentrate in becoming a successful business central practice through our program. So time now to reflect on what, at, what a business central practice can bring to you as an organization. So think about how joining our program can secure your go-to-market strategy and reduce risks. Uh, those risks that will result from going on it alone without our expertise. If you need more following our program, you can of course extend to uh, attend additional modules, additional training for instance, which uh, we, we offer to partners regularly in all regions. To summarize how we see this working for our up and coming B series sellers, look no further than the next slide. Grow your revenue and lower your costs. This is the message I would like to give you. Work with us. Um, that concludes this short introduction to uh, building a business central practice with the help from QBS. So the question that remains now is, are you ready to start? If you want to discuss on a one-on-one -on -one basis, please drop us a, an email at marketing at qbsgroup.com and one of our partner success managers will contact you to discuss the program directly with you and with others in your organization and to tell you about availability and costs in your region. So with that, uh, we have five minutes left of the scheduled half an hour and I'd like to open up now for Q and A's. I'm going to unmute the audience so you can ask questions if you, if you want to ask any questions. You can of course use the chat function to ask questions. My colleague Anne is moderating that so she'll be able to also answer on my behalf. Thank you, Simone. All clear for now. Thank you. So just to repeat what I said in the previous slide, if you have questions and you don't want to uh, put them down right now, please do email us at marketing at qbsgroup.com. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm assuming it's say it could be a lady. No question from now, just many thanks for the presentation. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Okay, if there are no more questions, we will close the, the, the session today. So Thank you very much for taking the time and hopefully this was useful and looking forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.